Howdy everyone. All right, so in my last video, I said I was going to move on to the NACA vent ducts, and guess what I'm not doing? I am not going to do those vent ducts. I've decided to go ahead and move on to the upper forward fuselage for the tip-up canopy. So this is drawing 24 alpha. So the first thing that I'm working on is this piece of aluminum angle here. It's aluminum angle. Uh, the total length is 42 inches, 42 and 3 16 inches. Pay close attention to the drawing because you, the drawing is depicted full scale, but you start at the center line. So it only shows you half of the aluminum angle. And basically all you do is you start at the center line of your angle and you measure from there. Center line is your zero point. You measure over 3 and 23 30 seconds of an inch and make a line. And then you measure over 4 and 15 16 of an inch, make a line. And measure over 3 or 6 and 3 16 of an inch, make a line. Uh, what I decided to do rather than try to stretch because this goes up to 21 inches so rather than try to fumble around with using a tape measure across here so here's my center line rather than trying to measure across here all I had done was measure from one line to the next to the next to the next so I started from center. Let me flip this around so you can see it a little better. Here's my center line. Started from center and I measured over that first number, 3 and 23, 30 seconds. Made my line. And then all I did was I measured from this line to make this line. And then I measured from here to here to draw my line instead of referencing zero, because I didn't want to stretch a tape measure across here just because it would be too cumbersome. So I would, if you do it that way, I would recommend getting one of these calculators that will actually calculate and display fractions. So let's just say as an example, let's say that I've just drawn this line, eight inch, 8 and 21 30 seconds inch. I have this line marked. I want to figure out what this line is. So you basically just take 9 inches 29 30 seconds and subtract 8 inches 21 32 seconds. Wow, did I say seconds? Let me start over. So obviously to get this distance here, you just take 9 and 29 30 seconds inch and subtract that from 8 and 21 30 second inch. Well, how are you going to do that without a calculator? And how are you going to convert those to decimals, right? So if you have one of these calculators, it will do it for you. So the first number is, what I say, 9 and 29, 32. So you do 9 inch 29, 32. See that? And then subtract 8 inch 21 32 there you see that and that equals inch and a quarter so that's how I did it rather than trying to um, let me turn this off rather than try to stretch a tape measure you know hold it here on the center line and then stretch the tape measure out here somewhere and then get a, an accurate mark so I just did that. I got those all laid out and then I had transfer, transferred the lines from this side of the angle over to this side of the angle. And the reason I did that is because when you look at the orientation of the drawing, you have, so your angle piece when looking at the drawing is basically laying on the paper and then the, the back leg comes up. And you can see you're supposed to drill a hole, as depicted on the drawing, basically up against the back part of the angle. You can see that depicted here. So basically, 
the drill bit has got to come down right up against this back leg at your different hole locations. So rather than trying to figure out how to drill that from this side, I just transferred the lines over to this side of the angle. And I'm just going to come down with my, my drill bit and just kiss the back side here and then punch it through where the line is. So that's what I'm going to do next. All right, talk to you soon. Howdy, everyone. All right, so this is the piece that I've been working on. A couple of things I want to point out that I forgot about. This does say that it's full scale, but it's not entirely accurate because here is your zero point, your reference point, which is basically halfway the distance of this part. So from zero over to here, they say it should be 15 inches. But if you actually measure this on the print, it's not. It's actually a little bit bigger. And if you lay your angle physically over the part, you'll see that this leg here is actually bigger. So this is a little bit, this is not entirely to scale. So you can't just use this to mark your reference lines. You have to measure them to get these dimensions correct. And um, so that's it. So I did, I laid out my angle according to these dimensions here. And you can see they give you a radius dimension here, which I had done. It's an, a radius of 1 16th, so an eighth inch drill bit will give you that radius. I had done that, but long story short, here's my actual part. So I had laid out my lines like I had shown previously, and then I ran my eighth inch drill bit right up against this back leg, right up against it, and then through to get that radius at the bottom of each one of these tabs. But then when it came time to cut these angles, I couldn't use my bandsaw because I got a super small bench top bandsaw and I just don't have room for this length of material. So I pretty much cut every single one of these with a hacksaw and then I had to come back and file it and during that process, I had to come back and clean up each of these individual eighth inch holes that I had put in it. And using a super small file to do that was proven to be a pain in the butt. So I went up to a little bit larger uh, rat tail file. So I ended up using, where'd you go? Here's my file. Here he is. So I just went up to a little bit of a bigger file. This is a rat tail file that I was using. And in doing so, it made this radius quite a bit bigger. But I actually prefer this better. Um, with the larger radius, you get a little bit less stress in here when you make the bend. So my angle piece is now finished and you can tell that these cutout areas look different than what's shown on the drawing and that's just the way it goes i'm okay with it um, i actually kind of like it better so i'm good with that the other thing that i want to make note of is obviously the reason you cut these notches out is so that you can bend the aluminum so these notches get cut so you can bend this leg here of the aluminum but keep in mind let me flip this around. As shown on the drawing, you can see that the radius of these uh, drill points, they go all the way to the other leg of the angle. So in other words, the bottom of that cutout, did that focus? The bottom of that cutout, the radius of that cutout needs to be as low as the face of this uh, leg of the aluminum. If you don't get that all the way down to this face, if there's a little bit of an edge there, if there's a little bit of this inside corner still sticking up vertically off of this face, 
when you go to put a bend in here, it will probably crack that because you still have a very, think of it as you have this leg of the angle, you have this leg of the angle. If you don't get that radius all the way down, even with this face, you still have this leg of the angle sticking up. So make sure you file that all the way flat. That's why you see these little scuff marks at each of those locations because I ran my file completely flat against this face to make sure that that radius is all the way down. Maybe that's a little bit of a better angle. So now that I've got that all the way down to this face, each of those, and I've got everything deburred and cleaned up. When I bend this around to fit the curve of the instrument panel, I'm not worried about any stresses being um, imparted on the angle with the bend. And I know that nothing's going to crack because, one, I have a larger radius to begin with, which will help distribute that stress. And two, I've made sure that I've got it all the way down. The bottom of that radius is all the way down, even with this face. And it should bend really nicely. And you can tell as soon as you get those notches cut. I mean, this just gets this just gets really flexible. So, so that's where I am currently. Um, I think I'll probably start fitting this to the actual instrument panel, but I'm not sure. I got to read through the instructions and look over this print some more. And I've got obviously I've got a lot more pieces parts to make. So, all right, let me keep moving on here, and I'll talk to you guys later.